I know your life on earth was troubled. Only you could know the pain. Burn afraid to face the devil. You were no strange. Son, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven and shout love for the Father and the Son. Oh, how we cry. The day you left us, we gathered round your grave to grieve. Wish I could see the angels' faces when they hear your sweet voice sing. Go rest high on that mountain. Sun, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven a shouting love for the fire. Go rest high on that mountain. Sun, your work on earth is done. Go to heaven and shout love for the fire. Go to heaven a shout love for the Father and the 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. My name is Father Scott Goodfellow. I'm the pastor here at St. Mary's. It's a joy to welcome you all uh, here for John's funeral mass. Assisting me today, we have Deacon Larry Benline, Deacon Tom Peshek, and so many from our parish community and our starting community who are here to support uh, John's family. Uh, so we just take a moment to pause, remind ourselves that we are in the Lord's presence. He is present to us. Uh, let's just take a moment as we call to mind his prayers uh, and also uh, that the Lord will be faithful and he will uh, stay true to us, that we may receive his grace, his peace at this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, John died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Our opening hymn, 645, Amazing Grace, 645.
Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened. May our hope of resurrection for your departed servant John also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to be seated for the liturgy of the word. Our readers may now come forward. <coughs> A reading from the book of Sirach. The sum of a man's days is great if it reaches a hundred years. Like a drop of seawater, like a grain of sand, so are these few years among the days of eternity. That is why the Lord is patient with men and showers upon them his mercy. He sees and understands that their death is not grievous, and so he forgives them all the more. Man may be merciful to his fellow man, but the Lord's mercy reaches all flesh. Reproving, administering, teaching, as the shepherd guides his flock, merciful to those who accept his guidance, who are indulgent in his precepts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift up my soul, my God. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift up my soul, my God. Your ways, O oh Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth, for you are my God, and for you I will wait. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift up my soul, my God. Good and upright is the Lord, he shows us the way. He guides the meek to justice, he teaches the humble to follow his ways. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift up my soul, my God. Your way, O oh Lord, is kindness to those who are true. Your friendship is with those who love you. You reveal to them your word. To you, O oh Lord, I lift up, I lift up my soul. My God. A reading from the second Timothy to Paul. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, a merited crown awaits me. On that day, the Lord, just judge that he is, will award it to me, and not only to me, 
but to all who have looked for his appearing with eager longing. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. It's a real blessing to be here uh, with you, uh, to pray with you, and to pray also for you and, and for the family and for John as well at this funeral mass. Uh, you're all here because John was incredible. <laughs> he was a great man. Um, as we heard you know, in the reading from St. Paul, he kept the faith. Uh, he was a very uh, faithful man to not only his church community, but also uh, to his family, uh, to his community, uh, to whatever he set out his heart and his mind to do. Uh, John really wanted to accomplish and to do everything well. Uh, we're here to pray for him. We're here to pray for each other and to show a sign of support, uh, especially for uh, you know, John's immediate family as well. Um, and so as we gather, we gather in the name of the Lord. Uh, we gather this Easter season where the church uh, never looks more beautiful uh, with all of the different flowers and, and, and things that, that remind us of uh, the life of Christ, his risen life, um, and the life that is to come. You know, in um, that first reading from the book of Sirach, what, what really just inspired me today was looking at, at that reading about as the drops of water in the sea or the grains of sand on the seashore, so are our days in this life compared to the days of eternity that are to come. And just think about that image for a minute. It's you know, that, that one life, uh, our, our whole life, is as a grain of sand or a drop of water in the whole sea. And we might be tempted to think that that's insignificant, but we'd be thinking wrong. All of us come together because we love John, but all of us have different memories. All of us have different experiences, ways that we, we worked with John or the ways that he worked with us. Um, and so none of that is insignificant. But all together, the Lord takes that and he redeems it. He lifts it up. And this is what we celebrate as a church each and every day, but especially during the season of Easter, we are especially reminded that the Lord's work of redemption means calling each and every one of us, our hearts, back to himself. And that no matter what struggles we go through in this life, when we give that to the Lord and we go through the cross of Jesus into his resurrection, there's a whole world, there's an eternity to come that is filled with not just the same good memories, but even better. Because we are purified of sin. We are given new life, freedom, our whole spirit, our body, becomes youthful and vibrant, and we get to experience the, every joy that we get to experience here in this life, but to an ultimate degree. This is the Lord's gift to us. And even as we gather in sadness today, because we miss John, we love John, 
And it's going to be different going forward without him. We also understand that the Lord has a place in his kingdom for our grieving hearts. The Lord receives our sadness. He receives our tears. He receives our, our missing of John. Our desire to see him again. And one day we will. That's what our faith assures us of. Our faith assures us that what Jesus has been given by his heavenly Father, he will accomplish by raising up on the last day. It was our gospel. Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, for it's the will of my Father in heaven, not to lose anyone, but to raise them up. We understand that John had a long battle with cancer the past few years, and he fought the good fight. I remember even as he was going through treatments, any chance he would come, uh, have to come back here to church, he would take. And especially working in the kitchen. He loved that. Maybe not so much at home. I don't think he spent a single moment cooking at home. <laughs> but he spent a good portion of his time here uh, cooking for festivals and fish fries and, and doing the stuff that, that just reminds us of being a community of faith and uh, just being a servant of Christ. And John was exactly that. He fought the good fight, not just his battle with cancer, but, but also to persevere in serving his parish community, in serving his Chardon community. And so many of us just remember maybe his faithfulness from uh, his work in Chardon schools as a librarian. We remember his work here at the parish festivals or during our fish fries many years so we all have memories that we can hold on to, and that's important. And so I just want to encourage you, invite you today, hold on to those memories, but also not grasping at them, but rather hold on, hold on to them as if you're presenting them to Jesus and say, Jesus, thank you for this. Thank you for the life of John. Thank you for his, his, his gift to me. Thank you for the person he was and all of the good that he's done here. And Lord, I, I offer that to you. And by giving the Lord in freedom, our joy, our sorrow, and everything, we allow the mercies of our Lord to come to us in a greater way than if we held on to things on our own. Because the Lord has the power to raise up. We don't. He has the power to redeem as Savior. And we remember and we come to him precisely because he has the power over sin and over death. What a wonderful gift today. So even though we gather in sadness and sorrow, we also gather with a certain sense of joy and hope in what the Lord is doing here. Think about it this way. We're celebrating Mass. We've listened to the Word of God proclaimed to us. We're receiving that deep into our hearts. The Lord's speaking to us now. In a few moments, we will enter into the liturgy of the Eucharist as well. And we'll get to experience. We'll get to see the body and blood of our Lord. We'll get to taste, touch, and experience His salvation for us and to accomplish what He asked His disciples to do at the night of the Last Supper. Take and eat, all of you. Take and drink. This is my body. This is my blood given up for you. Do this in memory of me. Whatever we offer to God, God doesn't lose. He raises up. He redeems. That's true for the life of John as he becomes a saint in heaven, as our prayer indicates. That's true also for our own hearts as we offer them to the Lord. We allow him to transform and transfigure us in great ways. Just as the Lord takes these gifts of bread and wine that will be brought forward momentarily, they don't remain as bread and wine. They become transformed into the body and into the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ who is always present to us, who is always there so that we can lean upon our Lord, that we're never alone, we're never abandoned, that the Lord is truly with us in all things. Bread and wine brought forward, transformed into body and blood of Jesus, and then handed back to us in a new way. And brothers and sisters, the mystery that we hear proclaimed this day for John is that we also bring John to the front of this altar. And through our prayers for him, even though we don't see it yet in this life, we will see it in eternal life, that there's the work of God's transformation happening for him right now that the Lord is raising up. And if the Lord can do tremendous wonders through bread and wine, 
turning them into the body and blood of his son, think about what wonders the Lord can do for a human person as we are offered fully to our Lord. The Lord has so many, many good things for us in store. So I just invite you to hold open your heart to him. You know, we've, we're bringing John as close to the altar as we can bring him. Obviously, we can't put him on the altar. However, we are bringing him close. And that's a symbol, that's a sign of the transforming power of our Lord's love, mercy, and the resurrection. So brothers and sisters, I just invite you to continue to hold open that heart, to present, to offer to the Lord. He's not going to take from you. You're not going to lose out. You're going to gain so much precisely because our Lord will be open and more generous than we could possibly be generous to him. We ask our prayers for John today, for his family, and we continue to uh, pray for one another and pray that the Lord may truly raise up John and give him new life in his son's resurrection. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. And our response is, hear our prayer. In baptism, John received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our brother John was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families, especially the deceased members of, of the Greaves and Gallo and Moodzen families, have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, hear our Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them into the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the family and friends of John who seek comfort and consolation, heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And we are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother John. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear for our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist and for the presentation of the offertory gifts.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, John, may be taken up into the glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. I invite you to kneel for the Eucharistic prayer if you're able. Otherwise, you may be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint John, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. Remember your servant John, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body, after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters, too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy will, will be done, done on earth, earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, us give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, us from, from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. For our communion rites, uh, please know you can come forward on either side of John's casket. Um, otherwise, if you're on the, one of the side pews, you can also come forward to one of the ministers on the side uh, to receive Holy Communion. If you're not Catholic or for any other reason at this Mass cannot receive Holy Communion, simply cross your arms over yourself like so, and the minister will offer a blessing. And also, if you need a low-gluten host, uh, come to my line. I'll be on this side of John's casket. I have uh, low-gluten hosts in a separate pics for you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 932, One Bread, One Body, 932.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant John, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. After the final commendation and the conclusion of this Mass, uh, we'll head out to the cemetery and come back here following the cemetery committal service for a luncheon. So all of you are welcome back to the banquet room for that luncheon. If you're not able to make it to the cemetery, you can head to the banquet room after this Mass. You can find your table and uh, take your place there and wait for the rest of the family and friends uh, to join for the luncheon. Brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, we now take leave of our brother John. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of God through Jesus Christ destroys even death itself. Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother John in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon John in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother John to his final place of rest. Our closing hymn is 578, How Great Thou Art, 578. Sings my song.
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And through the woods and forest glades I sweetly in the trees when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my soul Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and dare proclaim my God how great 